What's happening guys, Keith here with another Impact Wrestling Review. So today we're going to take a look at the final hour episode, a good episode in my opinion. But before we get to that, so we are sitting at 440 subscribers right now, really trying to hit that 500 mark before the end of the year. So if you guys aren't already subscribed to the page, I ask you please do. Um, once we hit that 500 subscriber mark, I'm going to be giving away this autograph of Sammy Callahan. This had come in one of the pro wrestling crates, and as you guys can see behind me, I already have an autograph of him with the Chris Brothers, so once we hit that 500 subscriber mark, I'll be doing a giveaway video with that image. Um, I'm sure you guys have noticed some changes to the page. Rather than doing a weekly impact report, I've been uploading single news articles along with the recap of the press pass. Sunday, I'll have a viewership video up. I'm also thinking about doing a review of the Explosion episodes as they air on the Global Wrestling Network. Uh, if you guys want to see that, leave a comment in the description or in the comment section below to let me know. So I'll probably do an episode upload when the press pass doesn't happen. Like next week, we won't have a press pass episode, so I'll probably just substitute an episode of Explosion or review there for that one. So now that that is over. It is actually Friday morning, and I'm able to do a review. Normally, I don't get this up till Saturday due to the new time slot, and I work Friday, but I'm working Saturday this week, so Friday morning, here I am. So, final hour. Uh, this was really a stacked show. I, I enjoyed the whole show. Um, like I said, definitely different actually watching it from 10 p.m. to midnight, as I usually watch it either Friday night or Saturday morning or some combination of the two. Um, so we opened the show with the OGs versus the Lucha Brothers. Um, we noticed right away that Hernandez was either sp sporting a sweat spot on his ass or something else. Hopefully it was just sweat. Um, Hernandez and Phoenix wrestled inside the ring while Pentagon and Homicide kind of beat the crap out of each other outside the ring. Um, King obviously had to get involved in the match. Uh, Phoenix then hit a moonsault to the outside, King taking the worst of it, I think he got blasted in the face with Phoenix's leg, then Hernandez hits a flying crossbody over the top rope onto the, all, everybody on the outside, both teams battle back and forth for a bit, King threw the slapjack in the ring, unfortunately it did not become a factor for him, uh, Phoenix hits a swanton bomb on Hernandez, then followed up by a double stomp by Pentagon, Pentagon flips Phoenix on top of Hernandez, and they get the victory. Uh, this was, I think, about a 10-minute match. It was fun. A lot of a lot of action. They used the time well. Um, the Lucha Brothers go over here, which I'm, I'm pretty sure we aren't shocked by that one. Uh, so we will see where this leads to. It'll be interesting to see where the OGs go from here. Um we go backstage, and Conan congratulates Phoenix and Pentagon on their win. We see LAX walk up, and uh, apparently they're having another victory party uh, with another defeat over the OGs for Conan. So I really think we're going to get the uh, LAX versus Lucha Brothers match sooner rather than later. It, it really has to happen, and it's it's going to be killer when it happens. It's just It just seems to make sense with Conan being... Or having some association with both groups, that it just seems like it makes sense to happen. And then up next, we have the debut of Jordan Grace. She is going up against Katarina. So we get a Jordan's Gonna Kill You chant to start the match. Uh, audience was super pumped to see her. Don compares her to Rhino in, you know, the strength and everything else. Um, I don't know if Rhino was the best comparison. I kind of think Taz is a better comparison, but either either of them is a, a great comparison for the debuting Jordan. Um, Katarina got a little more offense in than I expected. I wasn't sure who her, 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 her opponent was going to be in her debut match, but the match did serve its purpose, and it definitely showcased Jordan. Uh, finish saw Katarina hit a DDT through the ropes. She was showboating to the crowd. Jordan gets up, kind of gives her this look, puts her in the bear hug, and Katarina taps out. So this was a really good debut for her. Uh, crowd gave her a good reaction. Obviously able to show off her power. Definitely interested to see what happens with her at the next set of tapings. I know she's been dealing with an ankle injury. I saw her wrestle a couple weeks back. Um, 
Fightful.com recently did an interview with her. So if you guys don't know much about her, I'm going to leave that in the comments section below for you guys to check out. So like I said, Jordan's going to be a huge part of the knockouts division in 2019. And a good debut here. So we go to Ohio where we see Brian Cage show up. He starts attacking people outside of Rockstar Pro. Obviously, the Chris brothers are there. They get beat down, and Cage is screaming, where's Sammy? We go to commercial break, come back. Cage is in the ring at Rockstar Pro. He calls out Callahan. So obviously, this is something we haven't seen in quite some time, where Impact goes to another location to film for the show. Obviously, this wasn't Impact's production, so it, was, uh, it wasn't quite the same. Um, Sammy starts out beating the crap out of him. Cage gets in control. He throws Sammy. I think he actually powerbombed him into a pole and throws him into the crowd. They get back in the ring. Sammy goes for a pile driver. Cage reverses it. Chris Brothers come out to attack Cage, um, which they end up getting German double German suplex at the same time. Trey Miguel comes out. Zachary Wentz. Ace Austin. There was another guy, too. I'm not sure who it was. He came out. They all beat up, or they got beat up first, and then, obviously, the numbers game came into play. They beat down Cage. Everyone gets their moves in, and eventually Callahan hits a pile driver. They all stand tall. Um, kind of what I said they should do, have a bunch of guys come and attack Cage. Uh, I'm not sure if this is just going to be for the Ohio part or if they're actually going to end up showing up in Impact, but we will see next week when the Las Vegas tapings debut they take place this sunday through tuesday and we did get that x division championship match set up for next week's episode of impact brian cage defends against sammy callahan so that should be interesting to see what they do there we go backstage and taya is there and she says that tessa has shown the world who she truly is she is a coward and taya says whenever tessa is ready to step up she is ready for her so I'm expecting some sort of no DQ match or so I forget what Ty said, some sort of Tijuana street fight or something to that aspect. But uh, that's definitely where I see this feud going. Good stuff from Ty. Then we get the GWN flashback. We see a tag team match featuring the Motor City Machine Guns. This was a really good match. I mean, the crowd was super hyped. I really hope we get back to those days where just it just all this crowd reaction things like that i mean we're definitely on our way but it it's just incredible to see what happened in that time period uh then we get a interview backstage cross and moose are being interviewed by mckenzie moose says he has to get rid of eddie otherwise he will keep coming back killer cross says he's going to rip the title belt off johnny's waist like flesh from the bone total annihilation um, then we get to see more of the Scarlet Talent Search submissions, and in the words of Eli Drake, oh boy. Um, KM and Falaba are backstage. They run into Scarlet. They say they should be at the front of the line. Uh, she says they were doing well. Ba lost his title match. Then they both lost the tag team match against Killer Cross and Moose. Scarlet says since they're in Vegas next week, she tells them to go out and win her something, and maybe they'll... Maybe they'll get lucky. Then we have what I think was easily in the match of the night, and this was Eddie Edwards versus Moose. Um, the action started off right away. I mean, we've seen this feud building for a couple months now. This was definitely the match we should have gotten at Bound for Glory. I'm, I was a little disappointed in the tag team match we got, but since we got the two facing off one-on-one, -on -one, this match was really good. Uh, before the bell even rings... Eddie starts off right away with a suicide dive. They battle on the outside. Eddie gets a bucket of beer from the crowd and ice. He dumps it on Moose. Moose sends slingshots Eddie underneath the uh, ring, so he hits the steel under there. Eddie then gets a bucket put on his head. Moose kicks it off. Match finally starts at this point. Moose goes for a powerbomb on the outside. Eddie reverses it into a Hurricane Rana. Then he hits an overhead belly to belly. Absolutely beautiful. Um, Moose hits a top rope, go to hell, only gets a two count. Eddie hits a spear of his own, and the Tiger Driver, two count for him. They go shot to shot with chops, just echoing throughout the arena. This this lasted a lot longer than I actually expected it to. Um, 
Eddie goes for a Hurricane Rana. Moose catches him and throws him over the top rope onto the stage. What a beautiful spot. Eddie's elbow was all busted open. Alicia comes out, comes to Eddie's aid, buys him some time. I think Moose went to spear Eddie back in the ring. Eddie got out of the way. They had a little back and forth, and eventually they make their way back in the ring. Moose hits his spear, and he gets the victory. Great match. Big win for Moose. He really needed a win like this. Um, so it'll be interesting to see where they go with this. I would think that this feud would be over, but it's Eddie Edwards and his crazy ways. So who knows? So we go backstage, and Allie and Kiara Hogan are back there. And Father James Mitchell walks up, and he says, I'm just checking on my investment. She says that she ha she is no one's investment, Allie, that is. He says he kept his end of the deal. Now she has to keep her end. He was in her shoes once, and he learned to embrace the darkness. He extends his hand, and she says that if she goes, will my friends be safe, or they will have to be left alone? Sue appears. Allie grabs both their hands. Kira obviously tries to convince her otherwise. Allie says, I have to do what I have to do. Allie's eyes go black, and she leaves. Just James Mitchell's presence make every segment like this so much better. I love that he's still being utilized. He was one of my favorites from way back in the Asylum days, and even throughout the company's history. Um, but this will be interesting because uh, we're going to see Allie on the dark side probably. So I would assume we're going to get that eventual Rosemary Allie match later on. Um, but yeah, this this definitely creates a whole new um, angle. So maybe we'll get Allie versus Kiera first. So many things to go here. There's so many ways to go. Very interested to see where it, where it ends up. Um, Eddie is getting checked out by a doctor backstage. He may have a possible concussion. Alicia comes up, checks on him. Eddie is still obviously worried about Moose. Alicia yells at him and tells him he needs to worry about himself. Then we get Eli Drake and Joseph Park coming out. Eli says that he is a part of a dying breed, men who fought with their fists, their feet, and even their words. He says people have come he here and thought they could get into the business because of guys like Abyss, fighting with weapons, that hardcore style, death matches, things like that. Then Joseph gets on the mic and he says that he has filed the lawsuit against Impact due to an unsafe work environment. He talks about all the violence that took place in the concrete death match and then what happened to Eli Drake at Bound for Glory with Abyss. And he says, well, we'll give Abyss an, a pass. He's a Hall of Famer. And Joseph says that there are other people who want in on the lawsuit. So he's about to bring them out. He turns around, looks at the Tron. Eli goes for a low, hits a low blow. He beats down Joseph Park, mainly because of the whole Abyss thing. And he says that people like him have ruined the business. Drake then grabs a chair starts beating him down um i like this because eli drake has really been living this whole thing I, I know there's been numerous interviews with him on the internet saying that you know his type of character is a dying breed you know there's not many characters anymore it's just like he said hardcore wrestling things like that flippy stuff i think that's what he said in one of the interviews online um but no i, I like this because uh you know, it's something he believes, and once you bring that into storyline, it usually makes things better. Uh, we still need, and actually, before we get any further, I think this is actually cementing him as a heel, because he was getting booed by the audience, obviously uh, attacking a huge face in Joseph Park slash Abyss, uh, the Hall of Famer. But uh, right, like we saw, I don't know, I guess throughout the whole uh, open challenge thing, it seemed like Eli was teetering on that tweener role. Not sure if he was a heel one week, a face the next week. So uh, I think this really cements him as a heel. Hopefully later on down the line, we get that uh, Johnny Impact versus Eli Drake feud. I know, again, we saw it a lot last year, but Eli with the chase this time, um, and hopefully he eventually becomes a world champion again because that is all we all want to see. Um, and we see Johnny Impact backstage. He's getting interviewed by McKenzie. He kind of reiterates what he talked about on the press pass, but since obviously this isn't on the show, he says that if Cross wanted a title match, he should have just been a man and came up to him and asked for that title match instead of attacking him from behind and leaving his calling card. Johnny says he has a calling card of his own, and it's called Starship Pain. Um, if you guys didn't check out my recap of the press pass, it is available on the page, so go check that out. Then I did see the Aero Lucha commercial this time around. I mean, just an advertisement, no idea what 
what is actually going to happen in 2019 with it. There's been plenty of news stories popping out that Impact is looking for a new TV deal, which we all knew already. Obviously, getting moved to the 10 p.m. time slot wasn't ideal for them, or Pop TV for that matter. But, um, yeah, we, we will see. Time will tell. Uh, their deal is apparently up at the end of the year, so I would assume something would have to happen, have to happen sooner rather than later. So, yes, on to our main event. Johnny Impact defending the Impact World Championship against Killer Cross. Moose was at ringside for this. He got up on the apron early on in the match. Ref kicked him out. So that threw a wrench in the works for Killer Cross. Pretty even to start the match. No one had a real advantage. Johnny hit a shining wizard on Cross. Cross sold the hell out of it. Um, granted, the uh, all the sequins on Johnny's uh, pants probably didn't feel good scratching or scraping across Killer Cross's face. Uh, Cross attempts an Alabama slam. Johnny grabs onto the ropes, turns it into a pile driver. It was a nice spot. Uh, the two fight up the stage. Johnny sets, or uh, sorry, Cross sets up Johnny in the razor's edge position. He takes him and throws him back into the ring from the stage. Uh, Cross goes for the pin. Johnny, I think, kicks out at two, and then Cross uh, transitions it into a lion tamer, very Chris Jericho like. Um, Johnny's able to get to the ropes. Johnny knocks Cross out of the ring. Cross is hanging by his feet. Johnny hits a double stomp onto him. Uh, we go back in the ring. Johnny hits the countdown to impact. Only gets a two count. It, he really needs to get that out of his moveset. It just does not look good. He barely makes contact. The landing is sloppy. Should find something different to, for that spot. Uh, Cross plays dead at this point, like he's knocked out. Johnny's trying to pick him up. Cross reverses it, hits him with a gut wrench suplex, then goes for another one, but turns it into a power bomb. Cross goes for the cross jacket. Johnny's able to get out. Johnny hits a Hurricane Rana, and then Starship Pain for the victory. I felt like the ending felt a little flat here. I mean, Cross did look great throughout the whole match. Don't get me wrong. You know, it's all about the facial expressions, and Cross is just demeanor, but, um, I don't know. I just felt like the ending was a little flat. I feel like, not that they buried Cross, but it just just wasn't the way I would have done it. I mean, I don't know a good a good outcome for this match because Johnny, obviously being the newly crowned champion, he had to look strong. You had to keep Cross strong. There was no ending that was really going to work out with a definitive ending. Um, but, you know, this was Cross's first lost first time he's pinned they hype like i said they hyped up him being undefeated so i figured they were gonna go another route with the finish but he got pinned clean in the ring and that's that johnny impact has retained his championship uh next week we go to las vegas um and apparently matt seidel is facing johnny impact uh impact posted it on their twitter page i mean i don't know i i think that impact does more harm than good sometimes when just throwing all these matches out there. How about we just get a little clip on Twitter, something, just to build up these matches? I don't like when they give it away and then they kind of build it out the show. Why don't they just build it through the show and then we get that, we find out that the match is going to happen. It's a reason to tune in. You show these clips or these teasers about the show beforehand and sometimes it's going to get people to turn out, uh, tune out. Like, uh, I think we saw this a lot in Mexico when they were hyping, you know, Grado and stuff like that. And I would just see people commenting, oh, Grado's going to be on the show. I'm not watching. So I don't know. That's just my personal opinion. What do you guys think about the thing? Do you like that impact hypes up the show with matches already taking place with no build to them or, or what? Um, so yeah, that, like I said, overall, I enjoyed the episode. This leads us to a clean slate. Moving into the Las Vegas tapings should be good. I think this brings us through the end of the year. I would assume they probably take off the last two weeks to do recap shows, but this is uh, under a whole new regime, so I guess time will tell. So, hope you guys enjoyed my review. Thanks for checking it out. I will see you back Sunday for my viewership report, and until then... Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye. Did you like that video? If so, click here to check out more great content. Thank you for supporting the Clock Cleaners Podcast.